Okay, so let's do a deep dive into this NVIDIA GeForce Game Ready Driver 566.14. And I'm sure the first question you're going to ask me is, should I get it? And what is it all about? Should you get it? That's completely up to you. Do your research first. I will link you to a Reddit post in the YouTube description so you can go over there and check it out. And as well, when I wrap this up personally, I'm going to hand it over to Google's Notebook LM and let them discuss what people are saying about this driver and some more information about it. But the skinny on this is it is for Stalker 2 and as well, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. There are other fixes in here, DSR, DL, DSR, Call of Duty, Bluestacks, Corsair stuff as well. Something to do with this, a shader uh, cache size uh, set to disabled. Uh, you know, so that some of the stuff has been fixed. There is tons and tons of information in here, like I said, and it would take too long for me personally to go through all of this. So I'll hand it over to AI. Enjoy. You know, I love diving deep into the latest tech, and today we're tackling a hot topic. NVIDIA's brand new driver, 566.14. Oh yeah, this one's making waves, especially over on Reddit's or NVIDIA. They're definitely fired up. And we've got all our bases covered for this deep dive in NVIDIA's official word, the detailed release notes. And of course, we've been sifting through those spicy Reddit threads to see what's really going on with users. Are people seeing those sweet performance gains? Oh, it's a mixed bag so far. Ooh, intriguing. Some are singing its praises, especially for squashing some annoying bugs, but others are running into new issues, and it seems like performance is all over the place depending on your setup. Classic, your mileage may vary then. Mm. All right, well, let's try to make sense of it all. Let's start with what NVIDIA themselves are saying. Sounds good. Their press release is shouting out optimizations for STALKER2, Heart of Core Noble and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, both rocking DLSS3. Interesting, right? Seems like NVIDIA is really pushing that DLSS3 adoption. Might be a trend to watch for all you gamers out there. Yeah, DLSS3, that next level AI upscaling and frame generation. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA seems to be betting big on it, but it needs some serious horsepower to really shine. Makes you wonder about the future of PC gaming. It does, doesn't it? Is this where we're headed? Incredible graphics only a few can enjoy? A valid question. Some folks are hyped about pushing those visual boundaries. Others worry about getting left behind if they can't upgrade constantly. That classic tension, cutting-edge tech versus making it accessible to everyone. Always a tough balance. But before we get too deep into the existential stuff, let's get back to basics. What kind of bug fixes are we talking about with this driver? Yeah, you know, sometimes those are the real MVPs, especially if they take care of those really irritating bugs that just won't quit. For sure. And this release has some noteworthy ones. For example, they finally addressed that issue with DSR and DLDSR custom resolutions vanishing. Oh yeah, I remember seeing some complaints about that. Wait, what are those acronyms again? And why were people so upset? So DSR and DLDSR, they let you render a game at a crazy high resolution, even higher than your monitor, then downscale it to your native resolution. Makes the picture super sharp, gets rid of those jagged edges. But for some, these custom resolutions were just disappearing, forcing them to set it all up again every time. Ugh, talk about annoying, especially if you <laughs> really care about having the best picture possible. Exactly. And if you're a competitive gamer, you want every advantage you can get. No time for fiddling with settings in the middle of a match. For sure. Okay, so they fixed that. Anything else? Well, they also took care of that bug causing high CPU usage with Bluestacks and Corsair ICUE software. Oh man, I saw a ton of complaints about that one over on Reddit. People were getting slowdowns, even crashes. Yeah, it was hitting a lot of users. The fact they fixed it suggests they made some serious improvements to stability behind the scenes. Fingers crossed the stability improvements stick around. Hopefully. Though, as always, we'll need more long-term feedback to know for sure. Early days yet. So we've got this potentially groundbreaking tech with DLSS3 and some solid bug fixes making folks happy. But what about the flip side? What kind of issues are people reporting with this new driver? Well, like with any big driver release, there are a few hiccups. Some users are saying they're having trouble with Windows 10 transparency effects after installing. Oh, the joys of software, right? Fix one thing, break another. How bad is this transparency thing? Mostly cosmetic, it seems. Impacts how the Windows interface looks, you know, things might appear a little less polished, but shouldn't actually affect how things work. 
Still, it's annoying, and hopefully NVIDIA gets a fix out quickly. Yeah, those little visual glitches can really bug you, even if they don't actually stop you from getting things done. Anything else out there causing concern? A bit more serious, some users with Maxwell GPUs on certain laptops are getting system crashes, like full-on bug checks. Oof, not good especially for laptop users. Imagine you're in the middle of some intense Stalker 2 action and bam, blue screen of death. Yeah, not ideal. And it seems to be hitting specific laptop models with those Maxwell GPUs, so not a huge number of people, but a major pain for those affected. For sure. And on the professional side of things, there's a report of green tints popping up in Houdini XPU rendering. Houdini, that's... It's that 3D animation and visual effects software. Big studios use it for films, TV, games. A green tint in rendering means a lot of wasted time troubleshooting, which is a nightmare when you're on a deadline. Seems like this one's limited to the studio driver, but it shows how important driver stability is for those folks. Absolutely. A buggy driver for them is a real problem, not just a minor annoyance. All right, let's dive into that Reddit thread we mentioned. Always a good source of uh, passionate feedback. Oh, yeah, it's a gold mine. For instance, people are loving DLDSR, but they're not happy it doesn't support DSC yet. Acronyms galore. Remind me what those are again and why this combo is causing such a stir. Sure. DLDSR, remember, Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution. You render at super high res, then downscale it for a sharper image. And DSC, Display Stream Compression, compresses video signals so you can use higher resolutions and refresh rates over your display cables. But here's the thing, if you use DLDSR on a monitor with BSC, it can limit your refresh rate. Ah, so you gotta choose super crisp visuals or super smooth refresh rates. No wonder people are arguing about it. Right, tough choices. And another hot topic, no fix for that LFC issue. G-Sync and FreeSync users are not happy. Yeah, saw a lot of that in the thread. LFC, that's low frame rate compensation, right? Yep. Kicks in when your frame rate dips below your monitor's refresh rate, duplicates frames to keep things looking smooth. Yeah. But there's this bug where it's not working right, and some people are getting flickering and stuttering even with good frame rates. So you're getting punished for having a good setup. That's got to be frustrating. Definitely causing some rage quits. <laughs> and then there's the usual mixed bag of performance reports. Some are seeing gains, some are having problems. It seems like that's just how it goes with driver updates. So many different systems out there, it's impossible to predict how it'll work for everyone. Exactly. Best thing you can do is look for feedback from people with similar hardware and software, but even then, no guarantees. But there is one thing everyone seems happy about. That ICUE high CPU bug, gone. Uh, that must be a huge relief for those who are struggling I, with it. Yeah, it was a big pain point for a lot of folks, so this is a big win. On the other hand, we've got the ongoing saga of Windows 11 24H2 problems. Some users are still dealing with black screens when they all T-tab and game crashes. Ah, right. The 24H2 update, didn't that cause all sorts of driver compatibility issues? Yeah, it had a rough launch, and driver compatibility has been a recurring theme. Good reminder that sometimes those big OS upgrades come with some unexpected surprises. And it takes a while for everything to get ironed out. Speaking of new tech, I saw something in the release notes about rebar support for Stalker 2. But I gotta admit, I'm not really sure what rebar is. Happy to explain. Rebar. Resizable bar. Basically lets your CPU access your graphics card's entire memory at once, instead of just bits and pieces. Can give you a performance boost, especially in games that need to move a lot of data between the CPU and GPU. Sounds good, but I bet there's a catch. There is. Your motherboard, CPU, and graphics card all need to support it. So, potentially nice for Stalker 2 players, but not everyone's going to benefit. I'm noticing a pattern with this driver. Lots of potential, but also lots of... It depends. That's a good observation. It's not a simple install and forget update. You got to do your homework. So after all this, the official info and the real world feedback, what's the big takeaway? What should our listeners really keep in mind about this driver? I think the main thing is 566.14 is a mixed bag. Some great fixes, but some issues are sticking around and performance really depends on your specific setup. Proceed with caution then. Don't just blindly hit that update button. Exactly. Check the release notes, see if it fixes any problems you've been having, and look for feedback from people with similar hardware. Speaking of feedback, you mentioned the NVIDIA subreddit. Any other places you'd recommend checking out? Definitely. The NVIDIA forums are always a good spot. Lots of info there. And you can share your own experiences, too. And, of course, NVIDIA's own website has all the latest drivers and release notes. Right, right. You know, I always find those benchmarks and performance analyses super helpful. Mm -hmm. The ones from those reputable 
tech sites and YouTubers. Oh, yeah, for sure. They've got the resources to test on all sorts of hardware and software so you can get a better idea of how the driver actually performs. It's a much bigger picture than any one person could get on their own. Exactly. All right, so you've done your research, weighed the pros and cons, and you're ready to take the plunge. Any tips for a smooth update? Well, first things first, always back up your system before any major driver update. Just in case things go wrong, you wanna be able to go back to a stable version. And once it's installed, keep an eye on how your system's doing. Makes sense, like measure twice, cut once. Or in this case, read all the feedback, back up, then update. But what happens if things go sideways? You install the driver and suddenly games are crashing or your system's acting weird. Don't panic. Most driver issues can be fixed with a bit of troubleshooting. First, try rolling back to an older driver. Ah, good old rollback. Yep. NVIDIA usually keeps those older drivers available, so you can easily switch back. If that doesn't do it, check for updated drivers for other stuff in your system. Motherboard, sound card, things like that. Yeah, sometimes those conflicts can cause all sorts of unexpected problems. Exactly. And hey, if all else fails, there's always Google and the wisdom of the Internet. Chances are someone else has had the same problem and found a solution. True that. The online tech community is amazing. Don't be afraid to ask for help on forums. You'd be surprised how many people are willing to help out. It's a great community to be a part of. Yeah, one of the things I love about PC gaming, it might be a bit more, I don't know, hands-on than consoles, but there's this incredible community of people who are passionate about making everything work perfectly. Absolutely, and that's what makes it so satisfying when you finally get it all running just right. So, bottom line, it sounds like this NVIDIA driver, 566.14, is a bit of a gamble. Yeah, it really is. Some cool new stuff, some much-needed bug fixes, but also some potential risks. You really got to do your research. Informed decision-making is key. And remember, the conversation doesn't end here. Keep an eye on what people are saying, share your own experiences, and let's all learn together as this crazy world of PC gaming keeps evolving. Couldn't have said it better myself.